this lecture is um, kind of a, an introduction to something that is an extremely important concept in JavaScript, JavaScript um, what a class is, how to use a class to essentially stamp out new instances of objects. And um, what I'm going to tell you is I don't want you to remember or to memorize rather a majority of this stuff in this lesson. Okay. I don't want you to memorize the syntax because you're not going to use the syntax for anything uh, unless you're using classes to build your project. Um, if you're building a game like Battleship or Minesweeper, you're probably going to need to use a class, but the vast majority of you will not need to use this. The reason that this is important is because the concepts that we're going to pull here, the underlying stuff, the big picture stuff, is what is going to apply to all of the stuff that we do in this course. And this idea of, I have this thing called a class in JavaScript that I'm able to inherit methods and properties from that I can then use when I stamp an object out with it, okay? And a class is essentially just a blueprint for an object. So if I'm gonna have a car object that has, uh, I think we do this in the lesson, but say I have a, a car object that has a, um, uh, God, a uh, make a model a year, a uh, top speed, uh, a method called honk, right? These are all things that are encapsulated into that. And then when, whenever I make a new car object, I'm pretty sure this is what the lesson is. I'll make Ben's car and Ben's car will have different properties and methods, uh, or will technically have the same properties as, David's car, but the values of those properties will be different. So they'll both have an, a make, they'll both have a model, they'll both have a, you know, a year, they'll both have the honk method, but the make model and year, for example, for my car are different than the make model and year for David's car. So there's, the, we use the class to say, these are the things that represent a car, go make me a car object. And when you make the car object, you're giving it new properties for the specific car objects that you are making. So this blueprint essentially, or this class gives us a, an idea, a way to make a blueprint of a new object with specific uh, values and properties or properties and methods. And the reason that this is important is because when we look down the road at, um, at how classes work, uh, the big thing that we're going to be doing is instead of writing these classes, we're going to be inheriting from them. And that's something that's kind of at the end of this lesson. And when we get to something like, say, models, for example, in unit two, there are a bazillion methods and properties associated with a mongoose model. There's a method that allows us to create a new data resource. There's a method that allows us to look up a data resource by its ID. There's a method that allows us to look up a resource by its ID and delete it or update it. Okay. There are and that's just four of the many, 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 many properties that we have it available uh, and methods for a mongoose um, model object. And what we need to do is we need to inherit from and instantiate that, what's called a schema, by making a new schema that we export as a model. So by creating a puppy model, what we're doing here is this is our the shape of all of our puppies for this app. All of our puppies are going to have a name, an age, a, an age, a breed, ears, uh, like color, um, and then a like a, a fur color. Okay. And to do this, what we're doing is we're making, we're taking this schema and we're essentially extending a, this example of a schema out to inherit from it so that we can have this puppy object that has all of the methods and properties we need without having to write any of that code. So I don't need to write the specific code that says, insert a method into this object that gives it the ability to add something to a database. That would be a nightmare, okay? We are standing on the shoulders of giants who have already done all of this work. That's what classes are used for. It, any library that you download a package from with NPM, which we'll talk about what that is later. It's just a package manager for Node. But you're going to be downloading all of these packages that you take advantage of by instantiating classes. Uh, when we get to Passport, for example, you're gonna be able to import Google OAuth login. So you'll be able to log into your apps with Google as will other users. And to do that, 
rather than have to write thousands of lines of code to make it work, we just say, cool, I'm going to import this thing called Passport, and I'm going to instantiate a, um, a what's called a strategy. Okay, And that's essentially taking advantage of that same class thing. Instead of having to write literally thousands of lines of code to make this work, we just have to write a couple. And it, it really just makes coding super effective because we don't have to write as much code to do as much work um, because somebody else has already done it. So this is a really, really important concept. And it's something that's going to be at the heart of how we do pretty much everything moving forward in this course. But what I'll tell you is if you're not using classes in your unit one project, which again, most of you probably won't, uh, it's not a requirement, just makes some things easier. Uh, you're probably not going to do this. So if what we do in this lesson, you feel like goes over your head, all I want you to latch onto from it is this class thing makes objects. And then later I can inherit from those objects. If I want to just say, cool, there's this class that has all these methods and properties. I need to make an object that is represented by that. So I instantiate it. That's all you need to take away from this. That's the biggest, biggest takeaway from this lesson. Okay. If you leave this lesson with nothing else, that's okay. This, this stuff isn't that complicated, but I'm just letting you know. Okay. So what we're going to talk about here is the use case for class. This is also one of my favorite classes because when I was taking the course, this is when things with classes started to stick. Like I knew about JavaScript before I started taking this, but I haven't, hadn't gotten deep enough into like class instantiation yet. And I, I loved this lesson. Um, uh, after we rewrote it anyway. Uh, I found it fun while I was taking it. It was a little confusing in the way it was presented, but all that's been fixed. So this is this is a good lesson, okay? We're gonna talk about the use case for classes. We're gonna talk about encapsulation. We're gonna define a class. We're going to instantiate a class. We're going to include and use a constructor method in a class. Um, we're going to define a prototype instance method in a class. We're going to recognize constructors and functions in classes. This is the predecessor to classes. Um, we're going to define static methods. We're going to use extends to create a subclass. Uh, and we're going to use super within a subclass. Okay, I know this all sounds scary, but I promise it's not. So let's go into our lectures directory. Whoop. Whoop, whoop. It didn't help that it was raining when I woke up this morning. I did not want to get out of bed. Thank you all for. Makes it feel dark here when that happens. I'm sorry that yeah. happened for a two. Uh, it's, it's it's totally good. It's uh, she got back. Her flight landed on time, but we waited for like an hour and a half for her bags to show up. So. Well, she's home. That's fun. That yes, this is true. So. Um, code SEI lectures. Uh, we'll make a directory called JS classes. And then we're going to touch app.js. Apparently, we're not making a directory for our JavaScript file in this lesson. So we'll just app.js and index.html. Open it in VS Code. We go to index, pop our boilerplate in there, uh, set up our script tag. This time it's just dot slash app.js. There's no directory. Make sure we defer that. Um, the code in here, again, we can run it two ways. We can run it by looking in the browser or we can run it by using node. Um, you can do either way, okay? If we put code in here where we console log, um, I'm sleepy. We should be able to see that if we go live and see it in the browser. Which we do, okay? Notice I'm now getting the favicon error. Um, I'm sleepy. 
And if I want to run this in Node, I can open a terminal in VS Code, and I can also run this code using the terminal. And the reason that this works is because we're using an, uh, what's called Node, which is a JavaScript runtime engine. So Node allows us to run JavaScript outside of the browser. We're going to talk more about that on day one of unit two. But if I write into this terminal down here, node app.js, it does the same thing as what's over here. Okay. So this is just another option. In order to make this longer in the lesson, so I can have just two things sharing instead of three, I'm going to use the terminal to test my code in this app and for this demo. Okay. I want you to know that it's doing the same exact thing. There are differences between doing this either way, but none of them are going to apply to this lesson. The differences are based in a couple of things that are available to the HTML web API that are not applicable to this lesson. So we don't need to worry about it. Okay. I can do everything here that I can do here for this lesson. So just again, to make it so that I have this set up and can like have full screen lesson content and full screen over here or full half screen as it were. Um, I'm just going to type commands into the terminal to run my code rather than run it in the browser. We all okay with that? Doing the same thing, just different visualization setup. Okay. Okay. Classes. Okay. Forgot I added some stuff to this lesson. Um, we're going to make some cars. Okay, that's going to be our example for this. As I, I brought up earlier, um, we're going to talk about how object-oriented programming works with classes to create objects to kind of demonstrate all of this stuff. Okay, so classes are used to create objects. In orient or object-oriented programming, we use objects to model our application's purpose. Classes are like blueprints used to create objects. Okay. These new objects are instances of that class. Okay, You see here that we have a car class. What looks special about this car class? I know you don't really get to see the code here, but like, does anything pop out when you look at this? The, the way this the is The values written. are empty? Eh, no. That's not really what I was getting at. Lower, classes, lowercase, and cars, uppercase. Yeah, we have an uppercase letter here. And this is the first time we've had anything with an, starting with an uppercase letter. That's very important to realize. If you ever see a variable in JavaScript with an uppercase letter, 95% chance it's a class. Okay. So you'll see that this car class is just a representation of what all the cars are going to have. Okay, all the cars are going to have a make, a model, and a color. And you'll see that we've taken this car and we have instantiated it into three different types of cars. Okay, we have, these are instances. So we have an orange Ford Bronco, a red Honda Civic, and a blue BMW i4. Which, by the way, are very fun to drive, the electric ones. My sister got one of those last year and it's, do you know those cars have a launch mode? What? Anybody driven a, anybody driven a car like with a, a launch spaceship? mode before? It's stupid. You're parked, or not parked, but you're like standing, you're not moving. Idling? And you like push some special buttons and like hit the brakes a certain way. And it, there's a countdown on the screen. And it's like beep, beep, beep. And the car just like goes. Like stupid acceleration, like zero to 60 in like two seconds. It's terrifying. There's Why a Doctor do Who episode that would make that scare the crap out of me. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Why do we build that into cars? I don't. I don't understand. Um, but anyway, because we want to yeah. go fucking fast, boy. For yeah. fun. Yeah. Gotta go. <laughs> no. Gotta go fast. All right. So, um, why we use classes? Okay. We've already been creating objects using what? Object blank notation. Anybody remember that word? If I create an object, create? I say, no. If I say, let my object equal some, Literally. yes. 
Okay, this is called object literal notation. Okay, when we create the object, we are typing out exactly what the object is. We're saying, cool, open, curly braces, close, curly braces. This is the object, okay? This works, obviously. We've been doing it. We've been using it. Nothing wrong with it. So then why do we need classes to create them, okay? Let's think about this. Imagine we're building an application for a car dealership. We want to track inventory or track their inventory and modify it over time. There's no possible way to know the make, model, and color of every car dealership the, or every car that the dealership is ever going to sell when we build the application. We, do, we don't know that. Okay. So with this idea of a class, we, what we can do is say, yeah, the dealership's going to get more cars down the road that are going to fit into these specific categories. So that we're able to say, yeah, all the cars that come through this dealership are going to have three, these three properties. We don't want to know what they are yet, but as long as they fit into this subset of categories, we can add them later with our code. So essentially, we're building a shape for our data. Okay, Without classes, we would need to add a new object literal in the app's code every time the dealership buys a new car. That would be a pain in the ass. And that would require us to literally go in and like write an object out. You don't want to have to do that. Okay. What we could do is create a car class that defines what properties and methods a car should have. Okay. In this example, a car has a make, a model, and a color. And this kind of leads us into this idea of what encapsulation is. Okay. Encapsulation, uh, Christina. Um, so I'm just trying to just make sure I understand. So classes are used for, I guess, for an open-ended completed pro project where like you don't know what the values will be, I guess, mixed. Yeah, essentially. Okay. Um, this will make more sense when you see it. So give it just a sec. And this, this, I promise this will make more sense. Okay. So encapsulation is this idea that we have of building or bundling rather data, like properties and attributes and behavior methods within an object. Okay. We're going to build on this idea and we're going to create a car that fits these properties. Okay, um, all of those car objects we saw up above have three attributes. They have a make, they have a model, they have a color. These attributes are all data about a car. They define what a car is and define its properties. Okay, so a car object with these properties would look like this. Okay, what other objects or attributes might a car have? Okay, maybe a start method. Okay, a car can have a start method to say that it is running. We can console log that it's running. We're going to do this in a minute. Okay. In fact, let's just type it out. Let's say uh, const hybrid r equals, and we make an object that has make model. Previous uh, year or color, excuse me. Flag uh, is running. Set that to false. We have a method called start, which is just a function. And the function here will take hybrid car and set is running to true. And we can also console log. I don't know, room because running is boring. Okay. This is an example of an object. We know this. Okay. There's nothing special. This wasn't created from a class. This is just an object. I could show you that this works by doing a uh, hybrid car dot color and we console log this, right? And if I run this code, I see that we get black. 
let's say I run hybrid car dot start. If I do that, I should see vroom in my terminal. Because I've set a method up to console log vroom whenever I run the start method on hybrid car. Okay. This is a great example of encapsulation. We're taking properties and attributes and methods that have to deal with a car or that pertain to some thing and bundling them together on one object, okay? So encapsulation is just putting all the stuff that represents car together in one object, right? Encapsulating them. What are some other things we could add to this? Just throw some ideas out there. Charge. Love it. Charge could be a number too. We could say that charge is like 75%. And Top speed. we, we uh, to, to go with this, we could also have uh, not 75%. Let's have it be 75, just a percent is not going to work. But when we, if we were to add charge, we could have a um, a charge up method, right? Where we have a function here that uh, charge equals charge plus, I don't know, one. And we run this function once every couple minutes to increase the charge on our electric car, right? Um, what, what are the, some of the other ones you said? Has launch function or has launch it. feature. Yes, has launch button. Okay, and we can say that that's uh, definitely not on a Prius. Uh, false. Hey, you don't know. My Prius is fast. What yeah. if it did? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That, you see what I'm going here, where I'm going. Okay, we're adding methods and properties that describe this car. Okay. okay, so let's review here a little bit. Um, what does the acronym OOP stand for? Object-Oriented Programming. Yeah, what are classes used for? To make things, inherent Defi properties. Define things. To make objects. Yes. And then uh, somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Define encapsulation for me. Uh, so it just put method, attributes, and object all together. Love it. Exactly. And then let's answer this one as a cohort together in the classroom channel. So I'm going to put this and go ahead and send your responses here in a thread. Okay, assume we're making a cohort object, what could we encapsulate inside of it? Okay, Pokemon type, yep, class size, love it. Names, cool, number of students, ooh, birthdays, cities, yeah. Complete, yeah, it's like we're building Clippy. I love it. Enemy type. <laughs> what? <laughs> I kind of, I don't understand, but I kind of love it. Well, I, if we're making a class object, we need to know who our like mortal enemies are so we can help each other defend against them. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. <laughs> This is, yeah, y'all. I love y'all. I right. hope there aren't any enemies in this cohort. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, excellent. Ron, nice you just said horses, question mark, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean, do we have horses? Do we like horses? This is what happens when people find out that I'm creeped out by horses. Is they taunt me. So just remember that I'm grading your projects. Um. Let's let's it's keep called rolling. Exposure here. therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing that with COVID for my smell. I don't need it for horses. So, um, 
the um ba, 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 ba. we're gonna build a car now okay um we're gonna write some code we're going to define a class that we use to build a car that has all of these methods okay um so i'm gonna delete what we've got here i'll just comment it out and we'll do this from scratch okay instead of hard coding the object we're going to build a class that allows us to build the object Okay, right, so I'm going to say class car. Okay, notice seafoam green or whatever color that is. Okay, this indicates that there is a class here. Okay, you're going to see again the same pattern repeated in other things that we learn. If I open, um, I should be able to see it in here. Oh, uh, this is before we make the model and the. Sorry, let's go back to puppies. That same color is going to be a uh, bad example. You'll see it and we get to React. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, I just shut VS Code down. Look at me. Oh, I'm going to need a nap later. Let's go to classes, sorry. So this color indicates that this is a class. And whenever we instantiate this class, um, we're not necessarily going to get this color, but whenever we inherit from a class like this and extend it, we're going to get the same color. And that's where it becomes important is because you're going to see when we get to React that there are a lot of words we use that are green like this. And that's because they are inheriting from a class in some way, shape, or form, okay? You'll see it with a bunch of stuff in unit two, a bunch of stuff with unit three. Is okay. this the first time we've seen that um, code color? I believe so, because it's the only only color, only thing that's that color is classes. So okay. yeah, should be. What's different about this than the way that we've named other things? There's no, no equal sign. sign. No equal sign. No variable. Like, yeah, you're saying like no let let or something, concept. no letter const. Yeah, love it. Capital letter. That's one. We don't have any parentheses here to invoke it. We're just saying class car. I don't know if I can put a space there. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about a couple more definitions here real quick. You know, keyword. I'm going to say the same word like 15 times over and over again in a couple sentences. Okay. Here's a little bit more vocabulary that we're going to need to be able to get through this. An instance is an object created by a class. To instantiate is to instantiate a class to create an object. If I use a class to create an object, I am instantiating an object. The act of doing that, the process of creating an object is called instantiation. Okay. In JavaScript, we use the new keyword when instantiating a class. So to create a class or uh, a new object, I'm going to say, const my car equals new car, and I invoke it. Okay. Let's console log it. Car. It's just an object. Hopefully none of you are surprised by that. I've spent the last half hour telling you we're making objects from classes. That's how it, how it works, right? It's an empty object. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about how this works. Okay. When we run this code, when this code is parsed, there's technically something that's going to happen that we don't see. It's called the constructor method. 
we, we can see it if we want to, but under the hood, it's happening. And if we want to add a method or a property to this car, we have to add it to what's called the constructor method, okay? When a class is instantiated, a special constructor method that's defined in the class will automatically be called, okay? What this constructor method does is it initializes the data properties of the new object being created, represented by the this keyword, which we're going to get to in just a second, okay? So here, whenever I create a new class, I know that I'm going to need a make and a model. Okay? So I pass those to a constructor function. Okay? We this is a reserved keyword as you can see by the dark blue. Dark blue, dark blue. Yeah. See? That song came on when I was on the way to the airport last night, and I thought of all of you. Um, so we have this constructor method. And we have to talk about what is going on here, okay? This constructor method is going to run automatically every time that we create a new car, okay? Every time that we instantiate this car to make a new object. So it's technically running here. I'll prove it. Running. We see it. It's running. I just proved that. Okay. This constructor is going to accept arguments. We're going to define them as parameters here called make and model. What that means is that when I instantiate a new car and pass things to it, let's go ahead and say that this is, um, I'm going to make a new car and the make is going to be a, and well, let's use my car, Audi, and the model is a Q5, okay? So, Let's console log make model. Okay. And you'll see now when I run this, I get Audi Q5. Right, this is, let me get rid of this so we don't have any noise. Okay. Audi Q5. Whatever I pass to this class, when I create it or when I'm trying to instantiate my new my car object, these automatically get passed to the constructor function. Okay. That constructor function constructor function is what we're going to use to assign those properties to a new car. I know, again, going back to the car dealership example that I need to make a bunch of new cars and I never know what they're going to be. So if I'm, you know, you know, Steve in accounting is adding a new car, then Steve is going to type in Audi Q5, push a button and something in a database is going to create this new car. This is grossly oversimplifying how this works. I don't mean to undermine Steve's job. He does a whole lot more than just type buttons, but th there's a whole lot more happening here behind the scenes than, than just like you put some stuff in a form and it creates an object. There's a lot that actually goes on with that. Where I'm grossly oversimplifying it so I can explain this. Steve doesn't know what all the cars are ahead of time. Steve doesn't know how to code. So we have to give code to Steve in an application that allows him to enter cards and take advantage of this, okay? So all Steve has to do is put the things in the fields and hit the button and it's gonna make a new car for, for him, okay? So this, again, constructor functions automatically run, but you'll see that that doesn't necessarily give us properties on the car. I can say my car is an Audi Q5, but if I console log my car, I don't get any feedback telling me that my car is an Audi Q5. This it's console logs coming from within here. This doesn't help me. Okay. I want 
a car object that's an Audi Q5. Right now, there's nothing. So to do that, what we have to do is I have to say this dot make equals make, and then this dot model equals model. Okay, this. What is this? Okay, this is a keyword. I hope at least a handful of you get that. Uh, That's this... the best way I've ever <laughs> seen that meme used. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a keyword in JavaScript that's available for use inside of functions or methods, okay, like our constructor. This is a part of the function's execution context, which includes the code and everything else that aids in its execution. Okay, that's a tricky definition. Okay? The mechanism provided by this is necessary for all object-oriented programming languages, to provide access to an object's properties and methods from other methods within that object. What? What? I'm going to read that again. Okay. This is necessary to provide access to an object's properties and methods from other methods within that object. Okay. So what I'm saying here is that I use this to access a car's properties and methods from within another method. So essentially car, this is saying, cool, make, create, I make is a bad word here, create a make property on our new car and give it a value of this, okay? I know that we see this three times here. Circle the two makes that represent one another. Two of these makes have to match for this to work. Circle the two makes that must be yes. Exactly. Yes. Chaos. Okay. 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 We're getting a little too Jackson Pollocky here. <laughs> um, well, here we go. So this make right here and this make right here are identical. And what we need to do is we need to make it so that when we are passing this variable in under make, it is stored inside of our shiny new object. Okay, I'll prove this to you. If I were to say now the same code, okay, you'll see that I now have a car that's an Audi Q5 because when I instantiate this class, this car class, as my car, this Audi gets passed to make. It's a positional parameter. The first thing that I pass as an argument will line up with the first parameter. We know this. That's how functions work. That's so last week. Okay. So Audi is our make. What we're doing here is we're saying, cool, this new car thing that we're making, okay, this, this car, this is the new car, the, the shiny new car. It represents the execution context of this function, okay? This new car is going to have a make property. I'm putting a make property on this car and setting its value equal to whatever you passed me in this function, okay? I'll prove this by saying changing this to this dot banana. Okay. This code still runs. But my car now has a banana property, which doesn't make any sense. Okay. I just want to show you that this is not the same as these two things. Okay. These two things are identical. We're passing an Audi here as an argument that matches up with this parameter. And then we're using this value here to set a property for something. Okay, the, the property is what we're defining here. So these two words have to be the same. This can be whatever you want. But again, 99% of the time, all three of these words are going to be the same. I just don't want you to think that they're all exactly the same thing because they're not. Drew? So um, 
it's it's using the same code color for these words and um what does that mean or why does it do that specifically because they're properties, properties, just because and they're all properties well, properties and properties, arguments and parameters are all the same color, unfortunately. ah uh, okay So it's, they're all different things, but yeah, Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, You I don't didn't, have a good you answer. didn't decide that. I get it. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> cool. Nat. uh, let me know if this is, uh, I'm trying to see if I can kind of walk through the way it works with this. So Please. the constructor, the parameters we're feeding into it are the new keys that we want for that property. Um, and then what, and Tech. as well as the, this, it makes the keys and then we're feeding the pro or the values. through the Yes. new car. Yes. The, Okay. the parameters that we're setting here are going to end up being the keys. And the arguments that we pass to those parameters are what end up making the values. So when I say make here, this make is referring to the fact, or these makes right here are referring to this, Audi. This is referring to this, the property. the word make. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Again, you're not going to have to write these very often unless you do a complicated project. Um, this We're just going through this example because A, this is a cool lesson, and B, uh, it's important for you to know kind of how these work at a glance, okay? You're not going to have to write this code. We're not going to write a class. You will never see constructor function used again in this course. But these are really important in JavaScript, okay? It's not necessarily wildly important to know how to write them, It's more important to know how they work because we're going to be inheriting from classes all the time. And if you don't understand what's happening at some level, you're not going to understand what you're doing when we start instantiating and pulling things from classes by extending them. Okay. React was designed on these principles. Like when old school React came out, I know a couple of you know, like old school React with uh, constructor methods and or uh, constructor components and function components. Like React used to be designed off of this principle where we had a function that had a constructor inside of it that was used to set state for a component. And it's not like that anymore. React has evolved since then. Okay. In fact, when I learned React, it was the old way. Hooks were like brand new and shiny and scary. And now we use hooks for everything because this, this is old, which is also why it's a little bit less important that we talk about this because you're not going to use it in React like I had to. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, before we talk about the behind the scenes, take a break, come back to the top of the hour. We'll talk about how in object instantiation works behind the scenes, and then we'll start doing some fun stuff. We are going to talk about what happens behind the scenes when an object is instantiated. Okay, this is, this is kind of important because it, again, it's going to be at the forefront of everything that we're doing. And again, under the hood is where a lot of this stuff is happening. So we're not really going to get to see it when we write code to do this stuff. Okay. When we invoke the class prefaced with the new keyword, i.e. right here, behind the scenes, JavaScript creates a shiny new empty object and assigns it to the this keyword when calling the constructor method. Okay, so behind the scenes here, JavaScript is saying, hey, shiny new object, you're now equal to this, and it passes it to this method, okay? Object is now equal to this, okay? This is the object, okay? And what I'll say is if you're confused on this, there's optional content in TI that you can check out. There are also is a lesson in Notion that you can check out if you don't want to put yourself through TI. Um, there's a, tons of resources on what this is. Um, and we're going to use it for a bunch of stuff in the class. But again, this is this is one of those things that can be really confusing when you're first starting to get to learn JavaScript. So the, the easiest way that you should remember it is that it is how we use to... 
trying to think of a good way to set this. If we want to refer to something inside of itself, we use the word this. Okay. So you saw the example up here where I said, where I defined this is a perfect example of this hybrid car. Okay. When I created hybrid car, I defined a function that says hybrid car is running. Okay. If I did this for every car that I created, I would have to say, cool, here's my new car. And then my new car's name dot is running. Okay. That's inefficient. I need a way to do that dynamically. And this is the way to do that dynamically. This. Okay. By using this here, I can say that any new car I create, no matter what we end up calling it, is going to have a method called start that will set this dot is running to true. Okay. We're going to do this in the upcoming example, but that's how it's going to work. Thomas? Is this used anywhere outside of classes? Because the way that you described it to me kind of, or just described it kind of sounded uh, like recursion where you're using the function inside the function or yes that it is it can be used outside of classes um to represent the execution context of whatever is being coded um but it is not necessarily recursion so if we were calling something inside of itself and saying this method inside of it is going to call the thing which i again for if you don't know what recursion is that's probably not going to make any sense when i say that but like it, it's not, we're talking about itself. We're not necessarily calling itself. So recursion would be when a function calls itself. And mm -hmm. this is just defining a property within itself. It's not necessarily like calling a function that will then call itself, which would then calls itself again. There's no recursion actually happening here. Right. But, um, typically when we use recursion, that is one method of doing that you can have a function call itself by using this. That's completely feasible. That's not what we're doing here, but you could do that. Oh, okay. Well, gr great observation. Okay. So JavaScript creates this shiny new object and assigns it to the this keyword. Okay. The constructor method is called with the arguments we provided when we invoked the class. Remember, the constructor method is where we create and initialize the properties on the object assigned to this. Okay. And then after executing the constructor, the class automatically returns the shiny new object with all of the keys and values that we've given it because of this constructor function. Okay. That's how this works. Although the constructor method is notable because it's called automatically, there's nothing special about how it's defined. Okay. Other methods are defined the same exact way. This is a difficult concept. Okay. We're going to have a more concrete example of this in this lesson. Okay. You're going to see how it works. So if right now you're just like, what? Just give it a second. Okay. This in the constructor function refers to the shiny new object being created because it's necessary. The reason it's necessary is because we don't necessarily know the object's name ahead of time, right? But again, up here, when we did the my hybrid car or whatever, I don't know the name of the car in a situation like this. If I want to say in this class constructor that the car is running, I don't know what we're going to call it. I haven't identified it yet. I need a word to be able to talk about this before we instantiate the object. And that's exactly why it's called this, because it's talking about this. Okay. That's what makes it confusing. Okay. Let's move on and do this. Okay. Let's modify our car by adding a property named color. Okay, don't forget to add a new parameter to the construction method or constructor method. Okay, test it by instantiating another object of your choice. It should resemble the one below in some way, shape, or form. Okay, I'm going to give you three minutes to do that. So I want you to make it so we have a color here, and I want you to test it by instantiating it. 
And I'm going to use this because this is my dream car. Do you know that if every student that I've ever taught chipped in, it'd be less than, I think we're down to like $275 now, where if every student I've ever taught chipped in $275, I could get a brand new Acura NSX. You know, if every teacher I ever had chipped in a thousand dollars, I'd have like 30 grand. How many teachers did you have? Something like 30, I think. <laughs> Yeah, if you have a bachelor's or even associates or a master's, definitely makes sense. Yeah. Take three minutes, knock that out. I'll do you one better if all of you, like six of you even, gave me $275. I could buy a new one of my car. <laughs> because I buy garbage cars. Uh, my second car is a garbage car. I had to have a garbage car for Jimmy John's because I was trucking meat slicers and stuff all over the place. That's fun. Quick way to ruin a car is be a district manager for a restaurant. Mm, yes, I can't drive anything but my garbage car, however. They didn't provide you with a corporate car or like a van to do that? No. I used a Hyundai Elantra for that. I ruined three cars over almost 20 years working for jimmy johns anyway. as a former district manager of jimmy johns do you recommend jimmy johns i think their food's great yeah i i have many other opinions but their sandwiches are good how do you like working there we'll talk about it after the example i'll tell you all about my life at jimmy johns i'm gonna give you i'm gonna reset the timer here give you three minutes put some music on and afterwards i'll you can pick my brain all you want about how the restaurant industry sucks and what I think of the company I worked for for 20 years.
feel like we're in a planetarium right now. What the hell is that? I won't give you any more of that music. I'm sorry. I thought that was going to be a little bit more upbeat than this. Planetariums are great, though. They are, but they're also sleepy. <laughs> it's, not when you not... love the planetarium. That's my happy place. I'm just sitting there like that Shia LaBeouf yeah. thing where he's watching his own <laughs> movies. Oh, dear. All right. So we're going to go to... Um, um let's gonna go we're gonna go and add a new property called color to this okay so to do that i'm gonna specify in here black because my audi is black okay and i'm going to go in here and i'm going to add to my constructor method a property called color and i'm going to say that this dot color equals color okay and i can test that already because i already have this console logging, I can node app day JS and see here that I have a black out EQ five. Drew. So even though we named the new constant, my car console logs it as car because that's its class. Would we have to establish a name, like define it in the object to make it if, different than just car? No. It, and honestly, if you look at what it looks like over here, it's going to show you that it's a car with this is just how classes come through in in the console so it doesn't really do anything special here it's just showing you that it's a car okay and so where would we be able to see like if i had my car your car and third car and we logged all of them Aside from the properties being different would we be able to tell which is which by the name of it or no David car equals new car Ford escape orange. Okay. We can console log David car. And you can see that they're different. It but if says... we have if we have two objects that have like the same properties, but they're two different objects. Oh, I see. Um yeah. I mean if you console log one, it'll look like one. If you console log the other, it'll look identical to it. It's the same thing as variables, right? If I say let food equal beef, and I say let other food equal beef, and I console log both of them, food other food it's just going to say beef for both of them so there's not really a way to tell those apart either even though their values are the same is that yeah like, yeah that that answered my question okay i i'm not trying to like prove you wrong or like no no no, no. that's am that i am sense. i getting what you're saying like yeah so okay it, we just have to know like what what data we're accessing and and not like we'll know when we're typing in stuff we're accessing this versus that even if they have the same value Absolutely. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't get too crazy into it. I think you're, I, I like where your brain is going, but I think you're getting into overthinking it territory. So yes, you're right. Okay. So you'll, you'll see how these actually get used once we start applying them. I think that'll help with where you're at right now, but you're, you're right. right. There's not a way intrinsically to look inside of these and tell them, tell which are different, but you can't do right. that with any variable. So, right. Okay. Cool. That's excellent. Um, cool. Okay. So we did that. We tested it. Okay. The other thing I want to show you is that not all properties need a parameter in the constructor. Okay. This the way we've set this up with these constructor methods or with this constructor method says that I'm going to be passing these values to the class when I create it. Okay. But that's not necessarily something we have to do. If I want to say that every car I create has a value of is running that is false. I can say this dot is running equals false. Okay. And now I can see that both of these cars are not running. Okay. Neither of these cars are running. I'm co still console logging one and the other, which I don't know why one is sideways and one isn't, but whatever. Maybe it's because of the character length. I have no idea. 
Um, but you'll see that both of these cars have an is running property of false, even though I haven't assigned that in the constructor. Okay, this is just saying any new car I create is going to be turned off. Obviously, you don't create a car that's running when it runs off the, the lot, right? That'd be terrifying. Matthew? Is that because it's a Boolean? No. I could do it with something not a Boolean. I could say this dot um, uh, owner, right? Uh, this would be a bad way to do that. But if I do this dot owner is Ben, now both of them have an owner of Ben. It could be anything. It's all it means is we're not expecting a value to come in from a, as a parameter to set that. So this is saying every new car that I create will have this property, but it's not something that's specified when it's created. Cool. Okay. Let's talk about prototype methods. Okay, there are two different kinds of methods that can be added to a class. A method, again, is a function that exists on an object. Okay. So we have the option to add a prototype method or a static method. Prototype methods, which are the ones that you're probably going to use a whole lot more often, are available on an instance of the class. This is why they're called instance methods okay, and other object-oriented programming languages. For each is an example of a prototype method. For each is something that is available on every instance of an array. Right? I have an array. I can run for each on it. For each is a method. An array is technically an object. An object that has a method, that method is called what? Or a, a function, rather. The function is called a method. Okay? And because that method is available on every instance of that array, it is called a prototype method. Okay? Prototype methods are common. There's another less common type called a static method. And a static method is a method that can be called on the class itself and not on its instances. This is where this gets confusing. I'm going to talk about it, but I don't expect you to dig in and really like get this. Okay. Because the why I would do this is a little vague. And there are reasons why we would use static methods. You'll likely see them as we go through this course. But I don't want to get into it here because it's confusing. And I, I want you to pick the other stuff up from this about inheritance and, um, you know, extending subclasses and all of that, right? So an example of a static method is array dot is array. Okay. This is a method that's not necessarily available on every class. I can't use this class to call array dot is array. But if I run array, which is the class, right? Array is a class. It begins with A. Technically, if I want to create a new array, I could say let my array equal new array, and I could specify some values, right? You can make an array like this using this instantiation method. We don't do it very often, but you can. So this array is a class. Okay, if I were to do that, knowing that array is a class, that means there is a method available on that class to do something. Okay, that method doesn't exist on nums. Dot is array is not something that's available on nums. Oh, let me do that again. There's my array, one, two, five. Okay. What I can do is I can also console log array dot is array my array. And it's going to say true. This is a method that is available on the class, but not on an instance. So what I can't do is I can't say nums dot is array or not nums my array okay that doesn't work in fact it crashes it it's like what 
my array dot is array is not a function. Silly. It doesn't exist because this is a method that is only available on the class itself, not on an instance of the class. For each, I can run for each. That's an instance method or a prototype method. But a static method is one that's only available on the class itself. Okay. Why we would use those? Is I mean, this is one example of why we could potentially use those to check to see if something's an array or not. But there are other reasons that we would use those, and a lot of them come down to like uh, keeping track of data. Okay, we could set up a class method or a static method to say every time we create a new object, keep track of the number of objects we're creating. So you could add like a little counter, and that counter exists in the class, but not necessarily in each instance of the class. And I, I'm not going to get into that a ton, but there are reasons why you would do this. We're just not going to talk about them right now. Okay. True. So um, we already have a, a bunch of classes like pre-installed in our uh, like libraries or whatever, because you didn't make this array thing. You just mm -hmm. accessed it. Okay. Yes, this exists within JavaScript. Right. Yeah. Cool. Delicious. And you said delicious a lot. I did. I did. It's because I'm hungry. Same. So let's go ahead and add a method here. Okay, we're going to add a prototype method. We're going to add a method that is accessible within every instance of this class. Do we do a static method? Yeah, there's some cool stuff in here. We'll do it. Um, but let's go ahead and do this. We're going to add a method called start. Okay, so I'm going to say start. And I'm going to say this dot is running is true. And I'm going to console log room. Okay. These methods, constructor and start, they're not separated by commas or spaces or it's just, they're just here. Okay, there's not a comma, there's not a semicolon, there's not a period, there's not not a regular colon. They just live here. If I want to write another method, I write bananas, right? Like just, there's another method that exists. You don't have to specify any distinction between the next that one thing and the next. Okay. Our friend this has made a triumphant return as well. Okay. Christina. So in classes, you don't have to put function before the start. You just put start mm -hmm. to, oh, okay. Yep. If you're defining it like this, yes. Okay. It's great. Also, it knows that it's a function. See how it's yellow? Again, you're not going to be defining classes from scratch. So don't stress out about trying to memorize that. Okay, unless you build a complicated, wildly complicated game for your unit one project, you're not going to need to do this. This is just demonstrating some stuff. Okay. The reason that we have this here is again, it goes back to that hybrid car example. With hybrid car, we had to say hybrid car is running when we defined hybrid car. Because we don't know what the name of our car is when we define it, we have to say this because it refers to the shiny new object that we are creating with this car class. Okay. Okay. So think about how we instantiate a car. Okay. What changes each time we create a new car? The name of the car. And since that name of the car changes every single time, 
we don't have a way to say, cool, the name of the car. Then the way we do that is we say this. Whenever we instantiate this new car, we're instantiating it as my car. So my car here ends up being this in all of these situations. Oops. Okay, when I do the same with David Carr. David Carr, when I create this car, is this in all of these situations. So David Carr.make is this. David Carr.model is this. David Carr.color is this. David Carr.is running is false. And David Carr has a method called start that makes it go vroom. Okay. This is literally what I just said. This is useful because it abstracts away the specific object being made. And it says that this will reference the current execution context. So when we say anything we want dot start, anything we want dot is running will be set to true. Can use for literally anything. Okay, this is meant to show you that whatever the name of the thing is that you set, it it knows what you're talking about because it's the execution context. That's what this is. This. Let's add another method. I want you to define a stop method in the car. The stop method should set is running to false and log stopped to the console. I'm going to give you five minutes to do that. We'll come back and do it together. I'm going to put some not planetarium music on. It's like Ocarina of Time. It's uh, Kokiri Forest. That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah. Who's it by though? What's that like? It's like lo fi. Uh, Michael and Game Chops. Game Chops is probably the main artist, but it's uh, Zelda and Chill 3 on Spotify. Very good playlist. Perfect. All the Zelda and Chills are very good. You could share it. Great playlist. All right, let's do this. So we're going to add a stop method in the car class. Okay, this shouldn't be wildly complicating or complicated because we literally did the same thing here. It's just the same thing, just backwards, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to add a stop function that sets this dot is running to false and console log stopped okay and now we can test this okay a couple ways to do it you could test it here by typing um you know obviously we have to type some code in here to make it work but let's use the browser for this this is a great use case for the browser if i type here david carr Say what? I hooked this up, right? That's weird. Should work now. Oops. Oops. What the hell? I don't know why that word didn't work a second ago, but it does now. Uh, anyway, so let's say, um, oh, let's say that we do uh, my car dot start, and when we run that, it says vroom. Okay, I can look at my car to know that my car is running is now equal to true. Okay, the next thing I can do is I can say my car dot stop. When I do that, it says stopped. And I can look at my car again, and it says running is false. So we know that works. We've just added these methods to start and stop our car and can execute them on the instance of that class. The instance is my car. The class is car. The instance is my car or David car. Okay, we can make David car go fast. 
David's car is always driving fast because he drives like a banshee. Okay. Another thing we can do, but did everybody get that to work? Anybody have any questions on that? Anybody break anything they want me to help fix? Okay. Another thing that we have the ability to do is override methods. Okay. Because of a principle called inheritance, which is what we're going to talk about here in a minute, probably after lunch, to be honest, sub or after outcomes, subclasses inherit methods from their parent classes. Okay. JavaScript implements inheritance a little bit differently than traditional OOP languages like Java or Python, in that JavaScript's implementation is what's called prototype based. Okay. It says we won't go into prototypes during this lesson, but we are going to talk a little bit about inheritance. Um, it's pretty cool. Okay. It says it's in the further study section. I'm pretty sure we talk about that. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Okay. In the JavaScript, the object class is at the top of the class hierarchy. Okay. So, Almost all objects inherit its methods, like to string. Okay, so if we take a look at one of these methods, let's say, console log David Carr dot to string. And if we do that, we see object object. That's not very useful. Okay, that's just telling us we are we have an object here, okay, with some properties in it that we don't can't really see. Okay. This is a method that exists on all objects, but it doesn't give us any useful information. But what JavaScript lets us do is override that method. That method, that two string method, is something that's inherited by this instant instance because it's something that exists on all objects. But again, I, this is dumb. I don't I don't see anything here. This is useless to me. I can't tell what this actually means. So what we can do is we can actually override it by just re-initializing it, okay? So if I say here instead to string, I can essentially redefine what that method does, okay? Think about, this doesn't look very important, like, oh, cool, whatever, I took some weird formatting thing and changed it. Think about what you can do here. If you were to go into the array class, you could add your own array methods so that you just now have a method that does whatever you want to all arrays. That's powerful, okay? You could technically go into the array and change how for each works or change how other things work. You shouldn't do that, <laughs> but you could, okay? That's the level of power that you have here. You have the ability to override methods that already exist on objects. Drew? So what is an example of when you would want to do this for like a good reason that it would make sense? Unit four, we will get to uh, this com comparable example here. When we start storing data in SQL databases, one of the ways that we will format those objects is exactly the same. When we get to Django, you're gonna see that when we output data for an object stored in a SQL database, we have, it, it says something similar to this. It says like object, uh, and there'll be like a weird memory address because of the way that this is outputted. But I want to be able to see this in my database as a cat. We're going to build a cat collector app in unit four. And instead of seeing object at memory address, I want to see buttercup the cat, right? Or whatever we name our cat. And to do that, you would override that static method and say, actually, I want you to do this. Okay, it's called a dunder str method. Okay, like there's double underscore uh, double underscore um, string method, and you can use that to rename how that information is displayed. It's that same kind of thing. Okay, you can use it for displaying information. You can add custom methods to whatever you want to override things that already exist that maybe don't do exactly what you want. It's not very common to do this, but I'm showing you that it's possible. And it would only change it for the like globally scope, but like just in your application that you change it in. And then anytime you access it in a different like app, it's the default one. 
Correct. Okay. Cool. So let's say this to string method returns. This car is a, we'll use template literals here to say this dot color, this dot make, this dot model. Okay, so now if I run this to string, it says this car is a orange Ford Escape, that example, but yeah. Okay, so we just overrode a property that existed to do something fancy. Um, let's see here. This gives us an opportunity to, do we talk about airplane later? No, we don't. So we're going to skip that example, um, where we make our own thing. The example here is define another class and practice screwing around with it. Okay. I don't really feel like we need to do that right now because we're not going to use the same example moving forward. If you want to go do that afterwards, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay. But we're not going to, we're going to skip that part right now. Let's talk about one more thing, static methods, and we'll kind of stop there and we'll come back once we get done with outcomes and we'll finish this. I'm again, probably going to push the mobile responsive stuff to tomorrow because after I need to make sure that I'm approving your projects today and I want to prioritize that. So, um, the only thing left on the schedule, we'll talk about the schedule in a second. Okay, let's talk about this last thing before we break for lunch. Static methods, like I mentioned earlier, are methods that implement behavior that doesn't necessarily pertain to a particular instance. Okay, they're callable on the class itself, not on instances. Okay, is this literally the same sentence over repeated? Weird. For example, we could design the car class so that it tracks every car that it creates under the hood, pun intended. Okay. We could write static methods that return how many cars have been created, search for them by make and more. Okay. We could do all sorts of fun stuff with these static methods. So a basic static method here we can write is this. Let's say static about. Okay. And we'll console log. I'm the car class. Okay. Notice that we just used the keyword static to say that this is going to be a function that is accessible only via the car class. And I can show this how you the, show you how this works by saying David car dot about. And if we try to run that, it says error. David car dot about is not a function because it's a static method. It's not available on an instance of the class. But if I say car DQ4, oh my God, I need a nap. Okay, car dot about, now it says I'm the car class. Only callable on the class itself. When would Again, you run something like that um, in like an, a real app? Uh, these examples up here, like if we wanted to track every car that we create, we could have a static method that there's a variable that exists inside of this where we keep track of a car. And every time we create a new car, we run a method that increases a number by one. So we could have this like hidden information about a car and what the next car will be, or total number of cars created by this constructor. And that information, that meta information, can be stored inside of the class without necessarily being imparted to the instances of said class. And we can like access that later for some reason because it's being stored and saved. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about inheritance after lunch.
because this is important and I want to actually go through this and we'll talk about the rest of this fun stuff. Um, there's maybe half an hour of this lesson left. There's not a ton left in here. Okay. So let's talk about what we got for the rest of the day, just so that we're all on the same page. Um, I want to get anyone that has done their project pro pro uh, proposals in. I'm going to try to get those, those all knocked out while y'all are in outcomes today. Um, but responsive design, if we, uh, we have time for this this afternoon, if we need to push it, we'll push it to tomorrow. This is a short lesson. And tomorrow is literally the only thing that is mandatory tomorrow is a 15 minute lesson on playing audio in the browser. So tomorrow we have literally all the time in the world. So if you're worried about like constantly pushing things back, like we're not in a bad place. We, all we have, we have a 15 minute lesson tomorrow that's mandatory. The rest of the stuff's all optional and technically will be recorded, has already been recorded uh, and is available on YouTube. If you don't want to listen to me yammer or if you want to get ahead, all this stuff already exists like several times. So tomorrow's going to be a really light day. Okay. So this afternoon, we're going to wrap this lesson up. Maybe do responsive design. We'll see. Probably going to push that to tomorrow. So y'all can work on your project stuff this afternoon. Um, and we have a quiz that we'll take some point this afternoon with array iterator methods. I'll unlock that when we come back from lunch. That way we just, you guys can take it any point tonight. Christina. Is that an open note quiz or is just try to? It's, I would do it the same way you did the last one. See what you know. It's eight questions. So it, it's literally just, hey, here's a here's an array of bank information. What are, what array iterator method would you use to do this or to do that? It's multiple choice. So okay. I would just see what you know. And if you get it wrong, it's no big deal. Get all of them wrong and whatever. See if see if you know what method based on the name and based on what you know. If you want to look them up, look them up. I don't care. But I would use it as a tool to see what I know. Gia? Um, I noticed on Saturday we have an intro to Code Wars. Yeah, that's I just moved that over there because I don't know where I want to put that yet. I'm not that's not something for the weekend. We're gonna teach okay. you how Code Wars worked. I moved it off of the schedule because I didn't know where I was gonna put it. But yeah, don't worry about that. So tomorrow, this is like 15 minute lecture. This one's maybe 45 minutes to an hour. This one's about an hour. And these are both optional. So right now we have 15 minutes of lecture tomorrow. Other than that, it's all just project time. So don't stress out. Like I said, the first week of this course is like brutal. Second week is the content's a little bit tougher, but the pace is just like, whoa, like you can breathe again. Okay. It's, Are we it's, playing cahoots in the morning? Absolutely. Sick. We'll probably do some Jackbox games at the end of the day too. Like, yes. Yeah. It'll be a, it'll be a good time. So we'll do a happy hour. So those of you that want to imbibe are more than welcome to imbibe and we'll get a little silly and have some fun. Okay. Go eat lunch. After lunch, you're going to outcomes. Please do not come back here. I'm going to shut zoom down. Okay. Please go to outcomes after lunch. And then after outcomes, you will come back here. Okay? I'm actually going to a meeting with the POA board about my trees at noon. So I won't be here. I'm going to be yelling at the POA. So uh, get them. Go get them. Oh, I will. Look. It's more so my neighbor. My neighbor wants to not plant cedars and because he like doesn't like cedar trees. And I'm like, dude, they didn't even tear your trees up. Like, shut the fuck Unleash up. Unleash so, fern yeah. gully hell. Yes. It's I'll be a, I'll be the little fern gully thing you're the lorax you speak yeah. for the trees there you go there you go i'm more of a lorax <laughs> than a pixie so um <laughs> hey krista was awesome and strong and she saved the forest I, uh, it was i know I, i'm just i'm if i had to compare myself with a lorax or a pixie i'm much more lorax than i am pixie so there's nothing wrong with pixies so um i'm not showing any pixie hate all right anyway um God, that's gonna be the fucking quote channel isn't it um uh, it's already there go, yeah it's already done <laughs> go to lunch i'll see you after outcomes <laughs> all right later Thanks.